w won't you drop the the band the bottom band below the ear so it look better oh yeah yeah you're ready for war now Whew. all right it's like a it's like a non-working vr system <laughs> All right, we're already rolling. So, would you want to? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You want to kick this off? I can take this off for a minute, no, or should no, I just no, we're no. gonna yeah, go? Yeah, just leave it on. <clears throat> you might want to provide a little context so people don't think I'm insane. They might have skipped the last episode. Well, I mean, you have to watch it in order if you're going to. No one. No the one. truth is, I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> so, if you can keep it down. <laughs> the truth is, after your most recent international trip, you developed light sensitivity. Put that down. Put that down. Put that down. Okay. 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 What is wrong with you? Well, I mean, it's not very comfortable. Come on in. Yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, you're good. Wow, the whole band came. That's unbelievable. Who yeah, would have let's thought? Fire, let's fire the band back up. <laughs> Who would have believed we'd been able to get the full ensemble here? That's unbelievable. Okay, let's see. I'm, I'm listening for noises. <laughs> who, would have, who would have ever guessed the entire Red Hot Chili Pipers would have been in town? <laughs> The Pipers? <laughs> the Pipers not are the, back. Not the no, Peppers. Not the Peppers. No, no, no. Just the Pipers. Aaron almost accidentally scheduled a, a corporate event around a concert for the Red Hot Chili Pipers. <laughs> Number one, in my defense, the thumbnail was very small, and I don't think the word Piper was exposed. They played uh, bagpipes, I think, to Peppers songs and other things. <laughs> The, the part we couldn't figure out was why they were in a, an auditorium that only held 250 people and it had not sold out yet. I, uh, I, I quit being allowed to book corporate events after that. Oh, God, that would have been so tragic if everyone would have drove in. All right. Anyways, I, we can't do this all day. Okay? This is the part where I get a yeah. riddle and I have to guess. Yeah, what are you digging for in your pocket? I, you know, mind your own business, pal. <laughs> All right. So for those that didn't catch last week's episode, okay, we, we've tried a three week series where the guest is a secret from Jeff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so to provide some context to who there are some, some clues to who this guest may be, I have crafted a riddle, a challenging riddle, if you will. Now, this isn't Gary, is it? No, no. We Gary didn't bring from Gary. down the street that he's going to tell me runs the Zanesville <laughs> office that we don't have. And I'm like, oh, hey, Gary. Hey, Gary. Uh, no, but if, if he had availability and schedule, he would be here. All right. I just don't trust you. All right. So the guest is here. Okay. okay? All right. All right. Here it comes. Okay. Born late in the summer. Okay. Hold on a minute. That means August. Okay. Born late in the summer of 1990, mm. this employee came a few short months after the end of the Cold War. Also that year, Nelson Mandela was released from prison. To see heaven on earth, this person must simply take a short walk to the nearby hilltop. Oh, that's all I get? That's all you get. Now, there's some really strong clues in there. Okay. The nearby hilltop. Yeah. This person oddly shares the same birth date as me, just five years later, September the 18th. You said, oh, I thought you said um, I actually, August. No, you said August. I said late summer, and I Googled, and summer didn't start till September 23rd that year. Is it... September oh gosh. the 18th. Amy? Amy who? P Petit? Amy Petit. Turn that blindfold over and see if you're right. Yes! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> That was good. What's up, you Amy? Good. How are you doing? Hi, I'm hey, good. A long drive for you. What? Oh, five, bad. six hours? No, it was like four and a half. Four and a half. Not bad. Thanks for being here. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And good job. Hey, yeah. yeah. All right. I thought you'd get it from the hilltop. West Hill Kentucky hilltoppers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know where where heaven on earth is? That's the state of Tennessee, buddy. From from the oh, top. Oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking almost heaven, West Virginia. Well, that's I that's why it threw me that. for a loop for yeah. a minute. He said you would think West Virginia. He said he yeah. threw me off on purpose. I don't know what the Cold War was about either. <laughs> Cold I, War. I, 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 yeah. I can't change history. It happened that year. <laughs> no, I think you said it was like two years later or something. Yeah, like that. I don't know what you said. I I did not. Well, anyways, you've <laughs> you ruined it, it again. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and start the clock here. Let's have some fun. I love this because I don't know you all that well. Yeah. 
Well, here, here we We've go. had some good conversations at meetings before. Yeah. We've never really had a chance to sit down for a long time. We haven't. And I've still never been to your office. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? I know you drove all the way here today you should, for you this. You should come back <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I really should. No, whenever we talked about going out lately, I'd keep throwing that one he out does. there because I do want to come down. Yeah. 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 At yeah. Bowling Green, Kentucky is where you're from. Yeah. Amy Petit yep. from our Bowling Green, Kentucky office, also covering our Paducah uh, service area as well. But um, we... We are big fans. Almost put a, a line in there about the Corvette plant because that is also the home of the of where the Corvette is built. So field trips. There. Yeah, I wasn't certain if you would kid. get that. Also, home of Fruit of the Loom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So all kinds of big things happen in Bowling. Neither Green. of those would have helped me out. Really? You wouldn't have known that the Corvettes are made all exclusively in Bowling Green. I don't know anything about cars, honestly. Yeah, that's why I didn't add it in there. He comes from a big uh, car family, yeah. stock mm-hmm. car, racing, Spe- everything well, else. Well, speaking of which, hold on, hold on, before you get too far into that, okay? <laughs> we won't be able to see her on camera, but she has a special guest with her in the studio today, okay? Yeah, okay. And so when you talk about my family, you're also talking about her family. That's my first cousin, Leanne, sitting over there. Oh, hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> her and Amy know each other, and so as a surprise, Leanne made the trip up with Amy today. She has family in the area as well besides myself. Leanne? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you live? Bowling Green. You yeah. live in Bowling Green. It's your cousin. Yeah, that's how we met Amy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Small world. Wow, <laughs> I'm putting this all together. Yeah. Okay. I see it in your eyes. No, Lance's a nurse as well. Well, they've been so, blindfolded. I'm telling you, it's hard to come out of there and have your wits about you right away. It's a thing. I didn't realize that till last episode. Yeah. No, so. I don't know anything about cars. People ask me like, "What kind of what do you got in that truck?" I'm like, "I have no idea. It's an engine in there, I guess." A couple I mean, empty water bottles. He makes fun of me all the time because it's so dirty. Yeah. I just it, I I stink with cars, sir. <laughs> and then uh, fruit of the looms. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that either. No. Yeah. I, I have mean, a lot of knowledge of Bowling Green. It's, it's really a great city. They mm-hmm. have a, a town square that our office sits on. If anyone is ever passing through, let's say you're going to Nashville and yeah. you want to make a day of it, I would recommend stopping in Bowling Green. I've got some friends that went to WKU and they love it. They go back still all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I got to thank Western for you know, some leg muscles here for those hills. If you've ever been, <laughs> yeah. you get to that top of the hill at eight o'clock in the morning for your class and you're sweating and you're breathing all heavy. So it's, Is I that, would it's that. up down all over campus. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's the very top of the hill. It's awful. Mm. <laughs> you gotta husband actually teaches uphill there. both ways to class. No, I mean, no downhill you know, going down. People leaving. always make fun of that expression. Like, Oh, my grandmother, you say she had to walk uphill both ways. But <laughs> oh my you know, gosh. that is the truth because well, if your hills on the other or schools on the other side of the hill, you got to walk up it to go and you got to well, walk up it to come back. I know, what's funny on about that? Hill. So when you're leaving, you go down the hill, but <laughs> well, if it's on the hill, then they lied. Yeah, you know, well. what's most interesting about, uh, Western Kentucky university's campus. I've spent quite a bit of time down there recently. And um, they have a lot of albino squirrels. I don't know they if you guys have do. seen this. They're not, not just on campus. My mother-in-law has a bunch in her yard. It's random. Hmm. I don't know. I've seen them before. I've never seen yeah. a bunch of them, though. Yeah. They're like oh, yeah. white ferrets running yes. around town. Well, no, they're white squirrels. Yeah, I got it. I've been crunching the numbers on this. It turns out they're not ferrets. <laughs> It's the best that we have. Very to good offer. observation. Yeah, sorry about that. So, <laughs> Let's get serious. Amy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I really appreciate. It. Jeff has 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 a history of asking this famous question when we start the podcast. Do you remember what that question is? No. Did you agree originally to be a guest on the podcast oh. when he surveyed everyone? I did. So see, I got one right. Yeah, yeah. Has everyone agreed? That's no. Been on? Okay. Usually oh, really? not. <laughs> Yeah. He just, it, it's irrelevant what yeah. you want. Yeah. He, just, he just goes after whatever suits his interest. Well, I, was that so, day. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And then he called and I was like, oh my God, what did I sign up for? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that you did. It was, uh, thank you for, for coming up and thank you for keeping it a surprise. Yeah. Yep. It, it's been a hard secret to keep. We, we negotiated this several weeks ago and, mm-hmm. and I appreciate, as Jeff said, it takes a lot of time in the car to get up here and back. So we appreciate mm-hmm. you doing it. Um, but yeah, so tell us a little bit about your backstory. You, you're from the Bowling Green area, right? You, mm-hmm. that, that's where you're from. Then for a short period of time, not telling your story, but you were gone and came back. Yep. What is your background professionally in and, and how did you end up here at Village Caregiving? Okay, so I graduated college in 2013, healthcare administration, went to work for the VA in Bowling Green. Uh, that's where I met Leanne, got connected there. Um, from there, I then 
left there to go to my last job with LHC Group, a skilled home health agency. So um, I was a business manager there and then turned over into marketing. I just always saw our marketers going out and they just looked like they had so much fun. And I just love talking, obviously. So I was like, that just looks like something I want to do. So yeah, um, that's how I got into marketing. And then Leanne called me one day and she's like, my, my cousin Aaron is looking for a director in our, the Bowling Green area. They're opening up an office. And I was like, well, okay, I'll talk to him. Um, actually did not get it. That's a true we'll story. Do you remember this. that part of it? I did, did not get that. the job. Yeah, really. Yeah. I didn't. I got beat yeah. out, and then I was um, not on the interview. Thankfully, he was not in the you, process. Yeah. You were on the Zoom one, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you were in that last round. I or just not. remember the Zoom call. Yeah. I was in my car, and all of a sudden, felt like a million guys on my Zoom, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is great." <laughs> yeah, we could we could do better at that. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about the time that you did or didn't get it. Did not. Get I it. wasn't on that one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, well, I don't want to yeah. get into the details, but <laughs> I can be so right. So anyway, that's just like a little fun fact. Yeah. Um, we met at a Starbucks, right? It was, yeah. Uh, yep. you, I and Andrew met at a Starbucks. Mm-hmm. I, I talked to you that night. I got your number from Leanne. Yep. We talked that night. And we. I, I remember after we, we got done with the interview process, another candidate did get the job at the time. Um, but then you fast forward and when we were able to keep contact, and mm-hmm. I remember calling, I remember where I was at when I called. I remember you. the exact place I was at when you called too. And I'll tell you, um, I was actually telling Leanne earlier, I didn't save your number. <laughs> so I did not. And, and you know, when you don't get a job, they're like, Oh, we'll keep your resume on file and we'll call if something comes up. I was like, okay. Yeah. So I had a call from Ironton, Ohio, and I just took my phone out of my scrub pocket. And I was like, who, I don't know anyone from Ironton. I might've declined it. I'm not sure. I can't remember. And then I remember your voicemail and I was like, Oh my gosh, he actually kept my number. <laughs> I swear. I thought, Whoa, what the heck? Yeah. Well, that's so, a real compliment. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. It was a fantastic interview. Um, At the time, you know, that we were, the company was a little bit different. It was a brand new office. And and so when I look back over that time period and the decision that was made, it, I mean, you know, it it went how it went, but that's, that's something that I tell, we just recently had a round of interviews at a location and there were two outstanding candidates. We could only go with one. And, and so the vote came down. But I told the other candidate, I was like, I know this sounds crazy, but two times in the history of, of me being with this company, we've come back to the candidate when an opportunity has come open. So please take this as a huge compliment. And, and it, you know, that has worked out. Yeah, that, that I've said this before. It's li- no joke. I'm pretty sure it's my least favorite part yeah. of the job mm-hmm. is oh, whenever somebody like you does such a good job, does everything right, puts themselves out there, is vulnerable, answers all these tough questions, honestly, and they're all great, but they both are. Mm-hmm. And to have, to have to make that call and say, we went another way, I that really tears me oh, up. And I, almost I just can't like even to do give it. him a hard time about yeah. it. So honestly, I really, it's fine. It's like no question. hard feelings here. Now, you're probably going to be nice no matter what. But are there, whenever you find out that news, are there hard feelings? Because a part of me is like grateful and surprised that you were willing to give us a second chance. Yeah, no, there wasn't. I mean, there weren't any hard feelings. I had a job that I was okay. I was happy with. And, and I mean, I get it. You got to hire who you think is going to do better job or, you know, whatever. Um, no, I mean, Didn't otherwise I wouldn't have called him back probably. You're, <laughs> you're so much more mature than me. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have been like, why are you calling me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've been a baby about it. All right. <laughs> no, I mean, I got his call back and I was like, Oh, I was so excited. So well, no, no, definitely no hard feelings. We're very grateful that you gave us that chance. <laughs> I remember the first time that I got to interact with you in person was at a meeting <laughs> in Lexington, Lexington I think. or Louisville one yeah. of them. Yeah. And this is inside stuff here, a little secret of stuff. Uh-oh. But I'll Uh-oh. commonly leave a meeting with like one person that I didn't know all that well. And I'm like, that to me was like the all star of that meeting. That was you in that meeting. And I remember some of the comments. I won't get all into it. And then the uh, next month, we, uh, in September, I remember I was at the National Association meeting in Orlando, and we had a, I sent like a super long like TLDR text message to you. You, you did, re- yes, you I absolutely remember Do that. Do you remember what I said in there? Uh, I mean, kind of the gist. Yeah, it was just I think that you had basically turned that office totally around. Mm-hmm. Things were just like it rocket quick. ship. April. Yeah. I know it was awesome, <laughs> and you were doing everything the right way. It wasn't just luck. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even just your personality, which is great. You were out there in the community. I see you on Facebook as much as anybody in the whole company. 
going out and doing community events and doing fundraising and just being a participant in all those sorts of activities. And it's really good. Mm -hmm. And it shows mm -hmm. the activities you do drive results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're absolutely right. yep. yeah. You're right. Well, and so that has been, I think the, the, testimony of your contribution to the organization how lucky village caregiving has been to have you on board because i can't tell you the amount of times i've passed your contact information out to different folks in our organization who have different backgrounds than a marketing background right we we talk all the time that this when we write a job description for an executive director I mean, you, you're an executive director, so you know it is how we could write that down. You don't go to school to be an executive director, right? That's, I, you know, I'm a nurse, he's an accountant, you have a marketing background, and, and we all have done a very similar job in the organization. So it, there is, it's the person, it's not exactly the path that gets you there, but marketing is a hard thing. It's an uncomfortable thing for, for some personalities, right? Mm -hmm. Um, not for his, not for yours, for mine a little bit. I struggle when I walk into a room full of case managers that I don't know. And I, I kind of tense up and I'm really? just, yeah. I wouldn't picture that. I with know. You. Huh. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I want, it takes me a few minutes to get, you know, <laughs> get, get warm. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I, and I'm not lying. This is a true story. I was asked to, to speak <laughs> on dementia. Okay, which was my background. I, I was comfortable with it. And it was this little thing in Moorhead. And they said, well, you come down to Moorhead State University. We have a room rented and, and we just need someone to give a presentation. I was like, sure. I show up and it's a CEU certified seminar. <laughs> I'm one of nine credentialed speakers that day. Mm. I walk into a room of like 250 social workers and case managers. I thought there were going to be like six people there. <laughs> I was the fourth one to go, and I realized very quickly I did not have preparation like the first three people. How did, how did <laughs> oh, you do? Did was, you pull it off? I mean, they gave me my gift when I left, but there's no... I, I would not have given anyone credit for what they sat through. It was, it was a humbling experience. I think I did fine. I mean, it wasn't like... I didn't get booed. But I don't know that they would. Did you do. talk as long as everyone else did? God, I don't oh, remember. Yeah, was, <laughs> I just remember walking into that room and when we, I, he he had that part covered. <laughs> now whether there's any substance in it, whether it made sense or not. Okay, all right. So that's how. Okay, <laughs> this is wow. Well, made the five hour trip for this. Okay. <laughs> I'm, hey, I've had five hours to prep for this. It's actually longer than that. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, but that marketing is something. We'll just edit all that out. Um, marketing <laughs> is something that is not completely natural to most people. But you have this unique skill set where you just do it well, but have fun doing it. For some people, mm -hmm. it's a chore, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. it's working out, right? I do it because I, you know. But what is it about you or your personality? Where did you learn that from? Or does it just come natural? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> um, I, I can't lie. I had the most fabulous boss in my last job. And she she was, um, the, I took her job. Uh, she marketed for Bowling Green in the same company years ago, though. Um, moved up and to be my boss. And she's just fabulous. Had the best ideas, had the best advice. Um, but I, I do think a portion of it does come naturally to me. I just like to talk. I like to, um, I'm passionate about what I do. And when you're passionate about what you do, when you're talking about to someone else, it just comes easy. Sure. So I, I just, I mean, I probably wouldn't be mar good at marketing about something I have no idea about. I see. So yeah. I just, it's, so the product is something that you feel really mm -hmm, strongly about. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of times, I'm curious if you agree with this and if I'm wrong, I'll change it today. But <laughs> A lot of times what we tell people when they're going out to, to market village caregiving to the community, it's really about education. Mm -hmm. We're not selling a product, mm -hmm. right? We, we're not trying to get someone signed up today. I, I recently had a pest control guy come to the house and he was just dying to get the sale done. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I would, st I told him this on the front porch. I was like, I would starve to death if I had your job. Like I couldn't get you to close on pest yeah. control to save my mm -hmm. life. Um, but we're not selling anything. Do you, do you agree with that? No, totally. Okay. Yeah. We're just, I mean, just, I just educate people. A lot of people don't even know the services that we have. They get us confused with skilled home health agencies. And so uh, it, you just, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. You're not selling anything. You're just trying to educate them and, and gain trust and, and, you know, hope that they need your services. Yeah. But you're not selling. I wouldn't say anything. So when you came over, I got this. <laughs> Just sit over there. When you came over, you started marketing right away. And Village Caregiving at the time didn't really have a, a presence in, in, in Bowling Green. We, we had a, a physical office. 
Um, we had some clients, but to say that we were a fabric of the community or a partner of the community at the time was probably going to be inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Um, but you came over and the, the hardest part for any office is when the marketing starts and the results don't come Mm -hmm. right. There's a lag time. Mm -hmm. There's always a lag time. The odds of walking in on day one and, and getting a a big client or, or, or establishing a relationship of a referral source. But that lag time's there and yeah. you're working and you're not seeing the results. You've planted the seed, you're watering the seed and you're not seeing anything, right? How, how would you encourage a director that's in that season of their process to stick with it? That's the whole point that you have to stay consistent. Um, if you're not there consistently, they're going to forget about you in a heartbeat too because there's all kinds of other people that are coming in as well saying the same things. Um, so consistency is huge. That would probably be the, the biggest thing, honestly. Yeah. And when it comes to the, the approach mm-hmm. with some people, we call it like the machine gun style, right? <laughs> they go to their market and they're like, I'm just going to give 8,000 business cards out mm-hmm. and someone will call, mm-hmm. right? That doesn't seem to be your approach. When mm-hmm. I see you marketing or out educating in the community, you're developing long-term relationships, mm-hmm. right? What is it about that? How have you seen success in that, that you would encourage directors to take that route? Because if, if you don't develop those relationships, then they're not going to trust you and they're not going to trust what you're saying is, is even true. Um, so I always tell anytime anyone calls me for advice on that, I say you have to gain their trust. Don't go out there just thinking they're going to immediately give you their referrals because that, that's totally not right at all. And if you think that they are, then that's going to be a huge turnoff for them anyway. Um, so yeah, I just go out there, gain trust. I tell everyone it's going to take probably six months to see if it's a brand new place you've not been before. Um, you, first you don't need to start selling immediately. You need to just go in there and introduce yourself. I always kind of like to ask what kind of patients do you see? Or do you, uh, do you guys do a lot of rehab here at the nursing homes and things like that? So I always just gain trust and then kind of ease your, pro- your service yeah. into that discussion that you have. But consistency trust is is huge for any anything like that developing those relationships and and how do you go out and market at an office the size of Bowling Green at the time you may have had you know 10 15 employees and you go out and you tell Susie at the local rehab if you send me a client I'm taking care of them and it's that chicken and egg thing Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. if the client comes do I have the staff if if I have the staff do I have the client right how And this was fairly new for you in this position as an executive director of an office that's growing. How did you navigate that? Because that's pretty uneasy for people that haven't been through that before. So to get a client and not have staff, is that what you're saying? Which way did it come for you? Did you have the the clients came and I I never, (laughs) I was like, I have staff. Even if I didn't have a single person, I was like, absolutely. That that would be staffed in 48 hours. And it always, it always works out though. I mean, I would say don't lie, but <laughs> just don't tell the truth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, I always, I always tell them, I always have staff. Absolutely. Send that over to me and it'll be staffed and, and you'll be happy and, you know, they won't be calling you anymore. They'll be calling me. But then you solve it, right? Yeah. You, you said oh, it absolutely. always worked out, but yeah. it didn't work out because you just showed up and staff was No. I mean, it's a lot of work, yeah. obviously. Sure. Um, and I mean, but yeah, I, I always just tell them you have staff. They send it over. Always make sure you do a good job, though, obviously, because the second you don't, then that relationship might be a bit strained. Yeah. So. Well, you just say, I will have it staffed. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like you deliver on mm-hmm. it. So sounds like the truth to me. Cool. I think in a lot <laughs> It's just of a it, lot of pressure to keep on delivering on it. It is. Well, I mean, I think it's easier the more you start getting too, because you've got those caregivers now at some point, right? You've got caregivers that have one client, they may want another one. So it gets easier, I think, for me, the more clients you get, to be honest. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Much, much yeah. easier. Yes. Yeah. Whenever you're very starting off it's and you've tough. got maybe seven employees, there, yep. there are no pieces to move around anymore. Right. Yep. It's way harder. Yep. I agree. Yeah. I think a cool thing about Amy and the Bowling Green office is that they they have kind of seen that old village caregiving type of growth, right? Sometimes we go into markets and our referral sources have such a need that we struggle to keep up with some of those. But other times it's a real hard organic growth where you've got to cultivate that market and really start to make those connections. And and Bowling Green is one of those offices in the last year that has had that that old style village caregiving growth that kind of reminds me of Ashland. It reminds me of the old Pikeville office that's in Prestonsburg now. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you agree with that? Do you, yeah. do you see some of that? Yeah, and that's good growth because a lot of it's probably coming from word of mouth and actually the activities that you're doing, and that's a longer-lasting, sustaining type of growth. Right, yep. If one payer source loads you up, they might also take it away. So you're doing things all the right way. And, uh, yeah, so is it 
How's it going right now? How, I, how hard is work? Oh, I've got a DO now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Asked me that Jennifer six months ago. Jennifer yeah, Johnson? Yep, she's my RN DO. When um, did Jennifer start? Um, Mid-March. So I don't remember the exact date. It's obviously, I'm going to guess, been a big benefit to have the extra hands and the help in the office. But what about the camaraderie between the two of you from a psychological standpoint? How's that affected your day-to-day? I mean, we're, we're best friends. So we were, we were coworkers before, uh, and we're best friends outside of work even, but it, it, it's great. Everything's great. Honestly, it really is. Um, couldn't ask for somebody better. Yeah. Well, we talked about this before, but it seems like on some of the bad days that you always have somebody else there to pick each other up. Oh, absolutely. That we work hand in hand like that. Like I'm very high strung usually most of the time and she's not. So she brings me down, and if I don't know what to do if she gets high strung, we're <laughs> so we just hope she doesn't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but in same thing, like I mean, if if I'm having a hard day, she knows what to do to help me out, or if she's having a hard day, I, we just you got to know your your person, you know. And yeah. I think when you do that, you, you work well together much better. Whenever you and Jennifer talk to someone, or if it's just you that's out doing outreach, do you have sort of a thirty second? spiel pitch that summarizes what we do and why we could be of help to you or do you just kind of kind of wing it yeah me too I was I asked do. this recently on a different show and I was like admittedly I don't have a great I don't. answer for and that. I think it's that's just, even better though yeah don't you yeah I do because it's more authentic mm-hmm. that's exactly what I'm, I was gonna say I'm with you yep so some people that that join our organization um and come on as an executive director or director of operations their background, as I said, is pretty diverse. They may come from finance, they may come from sales or whatever. In your case, you you come from a a home health background, a skilled background, and so you have a pretty good understanding of the continuum of care, right? Mm -hmm. They leave the hospital, may go to rehab, and so you have a leg up in that because uh, some of our directors, they struggle to understand where exactly do we fit at in that model. You understand the model really well, but what did you find when you come over that, that was your thing? that that you struggled with was there something oh yeah um probably like just dealing with the juggling of staffing and all that because i mean i was a business manager in skilled home health but it's totally different than than what i'm doing in this role um probably the staffing because i mean in any industry these days staffing is tough but and if you don't have that experience it's a little tougher to adjust to to that so Mm. absolutely yeah i'd say that for sure i um I, I, when I look back at, at the Bowling Green office and, and again, the, the work that you've done in Paducah, and it was through your efforts in Bowling Green and those relationships that you fostered that allowed us to open the Nashville office, right? And, and so Chad is in the Nashville office now. And the thing about, we always would kind of talk in theory that, you know, you would kind of have like a hub and spoke type village caregiving situation. And somehow, I think unintentionally, Amy became the hub to Nashville, to Lexington, to Louisville. You have created friendships throughout the the company. When I talk to people, they're like, oh, yeah, Amy, (laughs) you've done a great job of that internal networking, not angling for something, not trying to get your name on anything, but like true friendship. And mm-hmm. I, I've heard you seek guidance from other directors. I've heard you freely offer guidance. Um, why is that so important for you? I don't know. I just feel like it's so easy to feel like you're alone, especially in this job. I mean, right, we, we you just kind of do your day to day and you get kind of caught up sometimes. But I think it's important to know your coworkers because we're all going through the same thing. Really, we truly are. And it's, sometimes it's just, it's easy to forget that. So just to have those friendships somebody to call when you're having a hard day just say hey are you having a hard day too tell me about your day make me feel better (laughs) but just to have that friendship and that relationship to just know that you're not alone in in doing what we're doing yeah she i know this is true because she didn't know that i was with chad in nashville one day and chad had a new (laughs) tesla and he took me out on the interstate to show me what it would do okay and on the dash it popped up amy petite and he's like care if i answer it yeah answer it so he hit the button i said hello and she's like, what kind of day are you having? <laughs> it was just one of those days where the world falls apart and you got to call someone and be like, are you drowning too? And th- those are the stressful days, right? Then I found out Aaron was there and I was like, oh, I'll call you back later. Bye. I swear, I'll, we were on the phone for like two seconds. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, so I had Chad call back, record the call. I've got all the information. It's not, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I seriously, I can't thank you enough for when, when in Chad, for instance, coming in, you, you immediately reached out and made friendship there and would call if you need anything type situation. And that is, I, I think, a game changer in an organization that, like you said, sometimes companies just aren't set up to do that. Um, I, I say it a lot of times on the podcast, but 
a lot of people that come to our organization now through the interview process find this podcast on our platforms and and we encourage them to take a look at it uh, mainly for the views but mm-hmm. also for the f- <laughs> also for the fact that the they can learn about our culture and learn about us as people mm-hmm. and this is a longer format so you know we're, this isn't marketing we're honestly who we are what would you tell someone that is looking at joining uh, a company like Village Caregiving, they're in the interview process, they've, they've probably went through the first interview, and now they're, they're getting ready to meet us through Zoom, and they're, they're learning about us. What would you tell them to anticipate about this job? The good, the bad, whatever you want don't to say. Don't do that. it. Don't do it. Just Fantastic. Don't do it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, totally cancel kidding. that check. I'm kidding. Uh, no, absolutely <laughs> do it. What did you say? I said, go ahead and cancel it. We usually <laughs> pay people for a good answer, but... <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> no, absolutely do it. Sometimes it's hard to understand Village Caregiving's culture, because no one else is like it. To be honest, like I'll, I'm going to tell you this because it's funny. Chris has probably already told you that he told me this. Okay. So I, it's probably my third day here because, you know, Aaron and Chris abandoned me after a day That's and a half true. and just left yeah. me with the phone. And I was like, oh, my God, don't ring. <laughs> so anyway, about three days later, I still didn't understand that I was totally free to run my day how I wanted to. And that's really hard to understand when you, especially coming from like a corporate job or something like that. So I texted Chris and I said, is it okay if I go to lunch? <laughs> I swear I did. And he said, dude, I don't, I don't really say what he said, but dude, I don't care what you do. Go to lunch. And I was like, okay, like you really must not care what I'm doing. So it's hard to wrap your mind around that though. And it's, it's true that this culture is just amazing. It's like nothing that I've ever worked in before ever. Um, so, I mean, I would definitely suggest anyone that's in the interview process to, to definitely come on board. It's just a whole different, it's a game changer really yeah. for personal life, professional life, everything. Cool. I've grown it's, a lot since being here. Get your work done. Take it seriously. Yep. Let it bother you a little bit when yep. you make a mistake and try to make it right. Yep. But have a good time while you're doing it. Absolutely. It's just as simple as that. Yeah. See, I've never really had much of a traditional job. I got out of school and just kind of started businesses and stuff, mm-hmm. right? So I sometimes I learn the culture is special, yep. I guess. It is. I've never been at a place, but it's hard it's, for me to even fathom why would anyone who's anybody's boss want to make somebody half miserable? I just I, don't get right. it. right. Like my last job, for like, example. What, literally, what's the point it, of it? I know. Well, there is no point to me anyway. Like my last job, I was marketing 24-7, only a marketer. And everything I did was logged on a phone by the hour. Everything. Why, why do you care what I'm doing? I mean, I'm doing my job. The results are showing. Why do you want to know what I'm doing down to the second every day? You so I think that's why I wanted to know if I could go to lunch. Cause yeah. then, <laughs> well, see, you couldn't do your job as well as you might have because you're spending all your time pressing it into a phone well, instead of actually yes. doing work. Or you're doing it late at night when you shouldn't be. And that's mainly yeah. what I did on the weekends and late yeah. at night. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around something like this when nothing else is like this all right you two need to calm i wonder down. if some of this is i mean <laughs> can you just go here we'll just we'll finish this up <laughs> yeah this is you out know of what? control earlier he told me to pipe down remember that <laughs> it was more of a shush <laughs> oh well, he should just go <laughs> <laughs> amy we, uh, nearly every podcast we come to a point where we dip into the fishbowl yeah. are you familiar with the fishbowl? i bowl? am it's got me stressed out it should it <laughs> Like, not, yeah. Listen, I have to tell you something. Okay. I've told so many people about this fishbowl, first of all. The very first podcast I watched, and I don't know if it was the first one you did or what, it was Sushi Assembly Line. Yeah. And you know how many people I've told about that and how fabulous of an idea that is? But especially the buffet. You said, why go to your food when your food can come to you? Like, how genius is that? Yes. Not only is it just smart and practical, but it's fun for the family Absolutely. and kids. Like you just got mashed potatoes going by. You just get we, you a scoop and slap it on your plate here. We encourage this. Oh, I Do love not. it. No, no, I just want to tell you, I've told probably a million people about this. Thank, thank so, you. So you're, you're well known in the Bowling Green that, area. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving this year, tried out a little conveyor belt. Hey, they actually have one in Bowling Green. It's a sushi. It's called sushi. Sushi train? Sushi, sushi train. And it's on assembly line. So somebody stole your idea, but the buffet is still available. So. Well, yeah. Why is it only for sushi? That makes no know. sense. You can't do that with anything else. I mean, else. you could even like, go as far as like bakeries. I mean, there, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. See, what my thought was, it could just be anything else. It didn't have to be food. Anything. You're at a bar. You got drinks coming by. You just pick one up. Yeah, well, cart, that, cart. that might actually might not be a good no, idea. Can't. I'd, I'd edit that one out. <laughs> can't. <laughs> I got here we could, but I mean, yeah, well, I mean, that, that sounds that might, like a good might, one. <laughs> that might bring in some issues. Car dealership. Oh well, bring them around. Oh, yeah, okay. let me see all the blue ones. <laughs> 
someone's in the back loading all the blue ones on. All <laughs> no, right. They're preloaded, man. You got to go up. It's a tall building, 11th floor. Bring around the Volvos. <laughs> Bring her, you know. Anyway, right. love Amy, that idea. <laughs> Amy, if, if Jeff had one statement that he could make, you know what it would be today? <laughs> oh, I don't. do I want to know? I'm not sure what this is. I like every holiday. You do? Mm-hmm. Every Just single like one. Just like them, but you don't love them. I, I, I don't know if... It's yeah, I mean, I, 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 I was thinking about... That's all we got. I, I like every like holiday. Yeah. It's holidays, which is my time. favorite. And I started thinking, like, which ones do I really not like? Some people really don't like certain holidays. You know, and it might be a family reason, which I understand. Yeah. But for me, I started thinking... I like every single one of them. They really? all make me happy. You do you can't. celebrate all of them? Like Earth Day? Do I celebrate them? Are you kidding? You do? Oh, big. What's your favorite holiday? Probably uh, Christmas or yeah. Thanksgiving. Uh, traditional see, answers. I love Thanksgiving and everything, but I hate the food. Ooh, Ooh I like turkey, stuffing, take. mashed potatoes, and gravy. I eat that. Mm-mm. Why don't they sell turkeys more often in the supermarket, by the way, except around November? One. This really <laughs> ticks me off. I tried to buy one not that long ago, and the guy seriously told me we only sell those big old butter balls on, for Thanksgiving. Really? What? You tried to buy a 22-pound <laughs> turkey in July? The other day? Yeah. What, why? I Because mean, it tastes obviously... great. No. See, What's my alternative? I go to Bob Evans and get the turkey lurkey. There I wanted to make it how I like it in the house. <laughs> I, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, I think it's completely reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. Wait, hold on a minute. We got a studio audience. Would anybody here mind having Thanksgiving uh, dinner, which is delicious? It's delicious. In yeah. the middle, in a non Thanksgiving time in the summer, would you have it then? One yes? She's done it. No. Oh, no. oh, that's a good point. Yes, two, two. Four. Oh my gosh, I'm the only one in the room that doesn't like month, Thanksgiving that's what I, dinner. Chandler Stacy, my man oh, in no the studio audience. The... Four to two. What are you guys are saying? No. I don't Which like Thanksgiving it's food. It's a draw. Let's all line up four people that said yes here and four there. We're going to fight it out <laughs> like Braveheart. You think we can solve this with our fist? <laughs> Yeah, that's not a good way to do it. I think it's also important to note that the food's just not available. So I think we win by default. Oh, yeah, because what you're saying doesn't even matter. You can't get the turkey. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you could protest outside of, you know, Walmart. So you were going to go home and cook a full turkey (laughs) in July. Yes. You were going to cook it? Yes. You like to cook? I make the turkey every Thanksgiving. That's my big thing. Makes me happy, too. I like doing it. And I make a good turkey, too, I'll tell you. This is no joke. You can ask around. Oh, it's, he's notorious for it. You, you walk out this door right now. <laughs> no, they for, all yeah, know. They all know this guy. <laughs> Jeff the Are turkey Are there any cooker. holidays that you don't like? Let's run down through them here, okay? You don't New like. Year's Day. We're going to name every holiday. <laughs> I can go month by month real quick. Yeah. Martin I mean, Luther King, Valentine's <laughs> Day. I, I don't like Valentine's Day. I'll say that. I never, we, my husband and I hardly ever celebrate Valentine's Day. Let me ask, so since you've had your daughter, do you think do you get more into the holidays? I, I found that we're doing that now um, with the kids. Yeah, I, we still don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Even yeah. I mean, I might. But I she's not in school yet. She's not. Oh, that's going to be a game changer. I yeah, think. it's But coming. she's only two, so Christmas this year should be fun. Oh, I yeah. mean, last year she was like pulling the wrapper and playing with it. She didn't even care about the, what was in the box. So this year should be fun. But yes, there's much more. Oh yeah, thought, it's espe- especially Christmas. Yeah. Valentine's Day is a tough one, though, because I just feel the pressure to not, like, I want to get a good gift. I want to do everything right. I don't want to mess it up. Eh, just you don't. another day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about Easter? <laughs> oh, well, who doesn't love Easter? <laughs> I like Easter. Yeah, do you Easter egg hunt every holiday? Every oh, Easter yeah. Can't okay. keep the guy out of Easter eggs. <laughs> and those Go turkeys, to, last Easter, Easter we egg. went to Sarah's <laughs> church first, then to my church, did both services, Easter egg hunts. Big family dinner. Uh, okay. How about 4th of July? Where's yeah, that at on the list? Wait, you skipped Memorial Day. I skipped a couple. Okay. <laughs> it's my favorite. But Memorial Day? Oh, yeah, because they have a massive parade at his house in Ireland. Oh, she was just telling me about that. Oh, it's Ironton. huge. Yeah. yeah, we live on the parade route. Yeah. It, it is oh. a legit parade. I'll give you really? credit. Jeff came this year. <laughs> sat front row. He sat his toes right on the curb. I did. <laughs> it was pretty good, too, That's I got to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's not a bad one. It kind of signals the beginning oh, it's of the summer. Start of yeah. summer. Are you kidding get, me? Get grilling those dogs get out the there. Get the sleeves off those shirts, people. What do you grill on there? You don't know. Oh, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers. I did brats this year. 
Yeah, I yeah. was just eating them right off the grill before oh, he could even you? plate them up. I was wow. just stealing brats. I called the police. Uh, <laughs> That's why we can't have a Halloween. <laughs> you big Halloween fans? Yeah, fan. I like Halloween. Yeah. Uh, new Christmas Eve is actually my mm. favorite day. I love Christmas one. Eve. Just That's, that feeling uh, at night. Anticipation yeah. of like getting the kids and Santa's coming. And plus in my family, that's when we opened all the gifts as a family. And then the next yeah. morning was for Santa type stuff, which yep. is a weird thing, I know. but mm. And uh, it was real special. My, I'm going to get choked up. Like my dad and stuff. It's just that that one means a lot. Yeah. It's really a good one too. But as I think out through the entire year, uh, there's there's not one single holiday I don't like. But you ever hear people they kind of gripe about them? Like, sure. Oh, the holidays. Yeah, I block them in my phone. Cheer, cheer up. <laughs> That's what I They're say. blocked yeah. on your phone. I don't need that negativity in my no, life. Never. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, well, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Well, this one, I'll tell you, I got to give this one credit. It brought more it, juice. It sure did, didn't it? We got passionate about that. Every once in a while, surprise him, you know? Four words brought, brought up so four. What does it say? I like every holiday. Yeah. Right that was a the short point. thought. I mean, wanted to be on the record. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amy, I honestly, I can't tell you. I wish that we could do six more episodes yeah. just like this with you because there's there's so much more to explore your time in Colorado and how adventurous that was and and your trampoline park uh experience I mean sh- sh- <laughs> that brings back all kinds of things that, that we'd love to know more about and we hope to have you back on the podcast yeah. hopefully it was something that you enjoyed yeah um and but gosh we again as I said earlier we are just so lucky to have you the the, the folks of Bowling Green a community that I can tell that you truly love I see it all the time on your social media. You're constantly trying to, to grow and provide access to care for people that, that are currently not getting it. Mm-hmm. And that's a testament to, to your commitment, not only to the organization, but to the calls. And, and we're just really, really fortunate to have you. And we thank you for everything that you're doing, but thank you for coming up today. Thank okay? you for having me. Thanks yeah. a lot. I really right. enjoyed it. Yeah. I'll awesome. give either one of you $20 if you can guess what color the rabbit's foot in my pocket is. And I'll let you go first. Yeah, just guess a color. We're not gonna move past brown. It. Um, brown. I'm going to say. <laughs> I just saw yellow. That. How did you know? You're a cheater. How could I? Cheat? I don't know. You must have known it. You must have seen it before. <laughs> that will be twenty dollars, sir. <laughs> He's a cheater, though, so I should get the twenty dollars. Give her the twenty. She no, drove further totally than I did. Wow. <laughs> okay. Did hey. he really not know that? that... I had no idea. I... Really. Good yeah. guess. Yeah. Statistically, it was going to be yellow. They... About 20 bucks. I'll get you for 20 on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, Thanks, cheers. <laughs>